Hey everyone, today we are going to create the interface for your WhatsApp AI agent. Because the problem is you set up your WhatsApp AI agent, but you don't know what messages your WhatsApp AI agent is getting and what reply it is doing on your behalf. Plus, you can automate the response or you can take the responsibility on your hand. Let me show you. So now we have the two interface over here. One on the left hand side, it's a bot where we'll be sending the message. On the right hand side, that bot will getting the message over here. So let's say I'm a user, I'm typing a message that hey, hello. So now on the right hand side, you can see we have got the message from this particular person that hello message has been sent. Currently, it's in the manual mode that you can reply the message. Let's say I write the message hello so i write the message hello back so you can see we got the message now if you want to automate this, all the response and you just want to see what message it is doing you can come over here and you can change the message so now as you can see you cannot send the message the automated response are enabled so everything will be taken care automatically so now if i write the message how are you so now it it will get the message over here on the right hand side but it will automatically get responded by your ai agent which you have set up so you can see i am doing well thanks is there anything specific you would like assistant with so now you can see everything is happening automatically so now you can take a control back if you want to reply something on your behalf you can come over here click on it so now you can type message manually again so you can say i am doing great so on the left hand side that same message your bot will send over you so now you can see now your whatsapp ai agent has its own interface over here so let's build this thing today so at the end of the video i'll be telling you how you can get this all thing for yourself and i'll tell you how to set it up so you can have your own whatsapp ai agent with its own interface so let's get started So this end and workflow is the whole brain of what is happening in the backend. So now let me teach you each and every node. What does the each and every node does? And also I'll be telling you how to get yourself your UI. So I won't be going deep in the UI. I'll be telling you how to get your UI and set it up. So this end and workflow is the whole brain of what is happening at the backend. How each and every control is happening. Now first and foremost, what we require is kind of a WhatsApp webhook over here where from where we can get the message and then we'll be requiring the access token to send the message again back to the whatsapp so i have made a dedicated video for how to get the access token permanent access token so that your token doesn't get expire that video will be in the i button please make sure to watch this video if you don't have the access token if you have the access token let's get started now to set up your own webhook what you can do you can go to the app which you created in the facebook Okay, inside that go to the configuration where we have this option to put the callback URL over here. So to get the callback URL, you can go to the uh, N and N and we can click on the plus icon and search for the webhook. So we'll be getting a webhook over here. Inside that webhook, we'll be requiring this uh, URL. Before that, go to the setting and toggle this on over there. It means that we can have a multiple HTTP method over here. By default, it will be only one method. Now, once you have that, just copy the link. First, get the test URL. Then after that, we can replace it with the production URL. So once you have the URL, let's come over here let's come over here let's copy it and now let's paste it over here once we have the url now in the verify token put any name over there just to verify the token that this webhook belongs to you we'll write hello it could be anything but before clicking on the verify and save go to the end and again and we'll be coming over here and we'll start this uh node over there once we are running this so let's come over here and first unpin it and let's come and execute it so now it is getting executed now if i go to the facebook again you can click on verify and success Currently, it will fail because we are not responding anything just to show you what we are getting. So we'll come over here. So now you can see we're getting all this information. We're getting the mode challenge and verify token. Now this verify token, we have to send it again so that it comes to know that this is the now I am the owner of this web. For that, we'll click on the respond with as a text and the response body will be the hub dot challenge. This hub dot challenge is uh, what we need to pass again. So once we pass that, but before that, come to the webhook and in the response, select using respond to webhook node. So now once everything happens at one go, it will verify your webhook. So for that, we'll come over here. We'll execute this workflow. We'll go to the Facebook, click on the verify and save. Now it will verify and save uh, properly. Now, once it is done, come over here, select the WhatsApp business account in the bottom part over here. Make sure to toggle this uh, on message part because it means that we are subscribed to this message part and whatever message uh, comes, we'll be getting over there. Now, once everything is done, so to check everything is working properly or not, now execute the workflow again, go to WhatsApp. Now, inside the WhatsApp, send hello to the test number which you have got from the app. Now, once I send this hello, now if I come back over here, now we can see we have got the message. Now we can see we have got that hello message over here. It's a read message. Uh, sorry. So for that, we'll go back again. Now let's uh, toggle this off because it's an active mode. That's the reason we're getting this. Now let's execute it again. Now let's come and write the hello. Now we wrote the hello. Let's see what we got. We have got the text message over here. To see it properly, we'll come over here and we'll first make sure 
that this is not a read message. So what happens now, whenever you have webhook, when you send the message, it also send the read part over there. So whenever a person sees the message, it automatically send the read message. So what happened when I went to this uh, WhatsApp over here, I read the message, correct? So once I read the message, it sends the webhook trigger again that the person has read the message. So whatever operation you want to do, you can do it. Currently, I don't, I'm not doing any kind of operation, but since uh, it is getting over here, we need to filter it out. So we need to check, does the text body contain any kind of a message? If it contain message, it means it's a normal message and not a read message. So we can see at this time it contain the message. That is the reason we have a filter node over here where you're checking does this message exist or not. It is existing. So we are keeping it. If it doesn't exist, we'll discard it. So once that is done. So now what we need to do first, we need to check does this person exist in our uh, database or not? So it, it means that so now in our interface, we have the database where we are storing the person information. All the different different contexts will be coming on the left hand side and therefore particular contact will be having all the message over here. So for that first we need to make sure does this person exist in our contact list or not. So for that reason we are doing this search record over there. So we have search record but before that let me show you what kind of a table structure we are storing over there. And for that I am using the data table. Now go to the anytime inside that we have a data table tab over there. So inside that we will be creating two data table over here. First will be WhatsApp contact all the unique contact which, which will be having. Second will be all the messages for that particular contact okay so for let's see the whatsapp contact it has the four column phone number of the particular user name of the particular user timestamp when we got the message last message preview like what was the last message which we got currently i'm hard coding it for whatever first message i'm getting but you can change it dynamically and fifth we have is the automated response that the response which you saw at the top over here if you toggle it it will automatic response will go if you again toggle it now manual response will go so for that reason we have this column over here that uh, if it is kind of on we need to send the automatic ai agent message if it is off automatically user will handle the message once you have set up this now second table which we have is kind of a whatsapp contact message it will contact all the message over there for each and every message the user send will be having the message id from where we are getting the message to whom we are getting the message from means from user to kind of a bot over there direction means it is an inbound message or outbound message inbound means the user has sent the message outbound means the bot has sent the message text what the uh, particular person has sent the message then timestamp when the message was sent it does it contain media url currently we are not handling the media url but you can expand it status means the message has been sent okay conversation id means for which particular user this all the conversation happens okay it is a unique id for each and every particular user so this is all the uh, column which we are storing now once you understood the column we'll go back to again to any time and now as i told you first we'll search the record for that particular user does it exist or not so for that reason we're using the phone number of the particular user is equal to something if it exists it will throw uh, the uh, message if it doesn't exist then we need to allow it over there so to allow it in the setting, we have to come over there and toggle this allow output data. If no data exists, it will stop over there, but we need to move ahead. That's the reason we're using this. And now we have a if node over there where we are checking, does this phone number exist? It means that did we got any kind of a record from the search record part over there? If you got the record, then we'll come over here in the true branch. It means the data exists. If it exists, we'll go through the upper branch. If it doesn't exist, then we need to create the entry inside the contact uh, table. Okay. This, uh, this table, which I'm talking, this is the WhatsApp contact table. We need to create the entry now we'll come over there and create the entry where we can see we are mapping everything and we are getting all this data from our webhook over there so we'll be storing the phone number name also will get timestamp also will get and message preview uh, whatever first message which you got you can write over there and by default it will be false over there and don't worry i'll be sharing this template with you so you can see what uh very value i'm still storing over here now once we have created the contact over there now we need to create the message entry what the user has sent so for that we have this uh, part over here where we are storing the message id whatever message we are, which we are getting so from the webhook we, if you can see we have this message id over here and now from when we are getting the message to whom we are sending this message is it inbound or outbound so currently since we are getting the message from the user it's inbound text what they're sending timestamp what we are getting the message over there make sure to have the two iso string part over there so this it's in this format because this is the format which our ui require okay status will be sent conversion id is the number of the user once you have that now is now we're checking is the response is automated or not so for that as i told you whenever we search that user we are getting this automated response part over there search record inside search record we have the automated response if it is false it won't go ahead if it is true then we need to write the answer from the ai agent so we'll be getting the message from the user 
वॉट एवर टेक्सट मैसेज द यूजर इज सेंड एंड वी हैव सिंपल सिस्टम मैसेज वॉट एवर सिस्टम मैसेज यू वॉन्ट यू कैन गिव योर रोल कॉन्टेक्ट नेम एंड इट जनरेट दी आंसर अकॉर्डिंगली दैन यू कैन कनेक्ट योर ओन मॉडल इन द मेमरी इन द मेमरी यू कैन पुट द नंबर ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर यूजर सो दट इट रिमेंबर द पास कॉन्वर्जेशन वॉट इज हैपन एंड नाउ वंस यू हैव दैट देन विल अगेन क्रिएट द रिकॉर्ड इन सेट द टेबल बिकॉज वी नीड टू क्रिएट दिस रिकॉर्ड नाउ फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ एजेंट नाउ वी गॉट द मैसेज फ्रॉम द यूजर Now what message the agent is sending? We are uh, we are inserting this record because we want to see all this information inside our UI interface over there. For that reason, we are creating this record for the particular message entry where you can see from now it will be from the bot. The bot uh, number will come over here. Two, it will be uh, for the user number over here. Direction is outbound because with the bot is writing the message. Text will be whatever message we got from the AI agent. Timestamp will be the current timestamp, whatever uh, time is there. Conversion ID will be the conversion ID of the user, not the bot, because we want to store all this information under that particular user. Once we have that, now we'll be sending the message. As I told you, for this we'll be requiring the access token to be stored, and I have created a dedicated video. Please go and watch that video because I have shown you how to create a permanent token. Now in the JSON body, we'll be passing this all. Uh, data over there is a very standard data where we are messaging product as whatsapp to means the particular user uh, number type will be text and the text body will be the what message the array agent generated once we have all these thing our message will be sent from the whatsapp bot end now once we have this all thing it's a very simple flow to handle the communication part of the whatsapp now we need to handle the ui perspective so in the ui we have multiple thing first is to getting this all the contact list information second thing is to get the particular user all the message over there third is to handle this automated response toggling part over there so for that reason if you come to the anaten part we have this three branch over here we have the get branch inside the get branch we have this uh, two branch over there first is to get all the contact detail user contact and detail second branch uh, is for the uh, getting the particular message list of the particular contact second post is regarding to send a message in the manual way third is a patch where we are uh, changing the response from automated to true or false uh, it depends on the particular user now i'll be coming through all this note don't worry i'm not going to keep it hanging over there so first let's go to the ui part now instead of the ui i have this very beautifully written ui in within kind of 3 to 4 hours obviously it took some amount of time it's whole vibe coding so in the ui part if i show you let me bring it let me bring my screen now this is a ui code over there you don't need to change any anything i'm telling you i have made it very simple for you we have a constant dot js file inside the src inside the config part over there where we have the four mode over here okay where we have the four constant over here test mode is nothing but it's a true or false value if it is true we have the by default value of the contact the so whatever contact you want to show over there so let me show you demo let me come over there and write test contact equal to true and let me come to the ui part now inside the ui let me refresh it So now you'll be seeing all the test data which we have in our kind of a um, file, which we have the contact file, JSON file, and the message JSON file over there. This test data will be shown over here. This test data also help you to identify what kind of a response we are expecting from the anytent or any kind of a backend server out there. So we have this in the contact JSON we are expecting this four uh, uh, this five key over there, and the message JSON we are expecting this kind of a key over there. Okay, now for that reason we have this uh, test mode. If we make it false, we will get the data from the anytent. So if I come over there and refresh it, now you can see we'll be getting the data from you. I think I have toggled this off here. That's the reason. Let me toggle this on. If, let me come over there and refresh it. We are getting all the information from the anytent. Okay. So now once you have that, now second is the API based URL. This is a URL of the anytent. So if I go to the anytent inside anytent, if we uh, we have this URL entering API where we have this URL over there. This is the same URL which we have uh, over you. Okay, it depend on test and the production mode. Now we have the bot number. So your bot will be having one particular number, the WhatsApp number over there. That number we are storing over there because we we'll, we need to pass from and to part uh, from our uh, API side. And we have this polling interval. What is happening over there is that it's not a web socket. I have put it over here. It's a normal HTTP connection. Now to render the information, latest information, what is happening over there? We have this polling second. So by default, I keep it two second. It means that every two second it will hit the API to get the latest conversation of what is happening. Okay, this is the polling part over there. So now once we have this all thing, now this is the only setup which which you need to do. Rest everything is the standard code which I have written. So you no need to worry about that. So now once we have this thing. So let's go to the n it n inside n it n. Uh, this is the uh, webhook of the UI entering API. In the setting, we have enabled the allow multiple HTTP method so that we can have multiple HTTP methods. So we have a get, post, and patch. So get is the very simple thing. If I come over there, now we are checking. Are we getting query parameter? Query parameter we require when we want a messages of a particular single contact over there. If you want to have the all the contacts over there, we won't be passing a query parameter. 
Okay, so we can see we have a data over there. So if you come over there, so currently we can see there is no query. Okay, so that is the reason if we execute this, it will go inside this uh, true branch over there because there is no query over there. So when we do this thing, now we are getting all the contacts. It's a very simple thing. What's the contact we are getting must match all and we get, will get all the list of data. And that will be in this particular format over here. Okay, this is the particular format because this is the same name which we have written inside our database. So make sure to pass this particular same name. That for that particular reason, I have kept this uh, context or JSON file, message.json file to see on, on which particular format we are getting the name okay and this is the same name which i have kept in my data table to make the life much easier once you have that we'll just respond back to everything so we have all incoming item just uh, throw it back to the ui part and ui will render everything properly and now when we have the query parameter inside the query parameter we'll be getting the conversation id so this conversation id will be inside this query parameter it means that whenever now we get a single contact message now we have this uh, condition over there where we are matching conversation id is equal to this this will bring all the message of that particular contact and again will be we are responding back to api in a simple kind of all incoming item and this all incoming item will be particular in this format okay so now once you have that now second is now the second thing is when we want to send a message from you so when we send any message from you in the api get call is kind of a post api inside this first we create the record and store everything inside our database as you can see we are getting the from to direction text timestamp status conversion id the all the same thing which we are getting over there in this particular same format we pass the data from the ui to the backend over there backend is our annotator and then we store all the information and that all information is kind of collected and stored inside our database over here once we have that thing now we need to send the message so to send the message we are using this send message uh, kind of http method which i showed you earlier for that reason we require the access uh, token and we have the same messaging product uh, two is kind of the message from we need to send the message text and body which we are getting uh, body is the message which we typed over here okay once we have this all thing now again respond back to kind of api the normal success equal to true now if you want to update the toggle so we have a toggle over here whenever we update this thing so we it calls an api so let me show you let me inspect it let me go to the network tab so now if you will be seeing over there let me refresh it you'll be seeing multiple api has been called the first api is regarding so we have this api as i told you earlier we are passing this payload it's kind of a get api in the get api we'll getting we are getting this response okay we have the kind of a single uh, contact over there now in the conversation we can see we are getting multiple message over here because for particular contact we have the multiple message over here that's the reason we're getting all this message from the annotator now if i toggle this thing you can see multi new api has been called and this is the api for this patch api we are we are passing this payload of automated response equal to true it means it is uh, turned true now once it is true now if i go to the data table inside this uh, kind of a whatsapp contact you can see it is marked as true over there it means now whatever message the user will send our agent will automatically respond to that so you see how simple and beautiful this thing is to make and have your own ui for your whatsapp ai agent so it took me around a good amount of time to make this all this thing possible for you i'll be giving you this uh, for this you can go to my school community inside that go to my classroom inside classroom there is a youtube resource inside resource we have whatsapp automation uh, kind of folder over there inside that we have this uh, whatsapp ui interface for agent where we have the end and template and don't worry by the time you go to the school community the front end part will also be added so don't worry by the time you watch this video the front end part will also be added over here so i hope you like the video if you like the video please let me know your thoughts and feedback in the comment box uh, we'll meet in the next video till then take care